This presentation is going over the analysis of the width tapered cantilever beam measurement. Now recall to perform the test, you prescribe a displacement rate to your load frame and record load. So the output is load versus load line displacement. When you commence the test, you observe an initial linear response as your beam loads and begins to store elastic drain energy prior to debond initiation. We call this beam loading. When the energy stored in the beam exceeds the critical debond energy of your sample, a debond will pop in. This often occurs with a spike in the load because it takes a bit more energy to start the debond than to propagate it. And this is referred to as debond initiation. Once the debond has been created, it will propagate further with displacement of your beam at a unique plateau load. This is stable debond propagation. Now you want to let your debond propagate until it travels about a half to two thirds of your beam's length before concluding the test. At this point, you should reverse the direction of your load frame to unload your beam, and this is simply referred to as beam unloading. Now the maximum displacement of your beam is the first value that we need from the analysis from this measurement. We'll refer to this as delta F and in this example, it's about 6 millimeters. This is the equation we use to calculate the critical debond energy, or adhesion, of our sample. The first inputs we require are the final load line displacement, the included angle of the width tapered beam, and the final debond length. In the current example we showed on the previous slide, that the final load line displacement is 6 millimeters, so we can enter that into the equation. Next, the included angle of the beam is something we know because we fabricated the beam and that's the one we've chosen to perform this measurement. In this case, it was a 20 degree beam, so we can enter that into the equation. And the final debond length is something we evaluate from the sample after the conclusion of the test. And I've demonstrated how to do that in some previous videos. In the current example, our final D bond length was 25.7 millimeters, so we can enter that into the equation. The last thing we need to evaluate this equation is load. Now there are a number of ways to do this, but the method I prefer is to first evaluate the entire load response with this equation. That will result in a plot that looks like this. Notice the shape is identical to our load versus displacement plot, but the y-axis is now debond energy. Now the only valid portion of the calculation is the part over which stable debond propagation occurred, illustrated here. Now we should only take these values of the calculation to evaluate our average and standard deviation of the measurement. And in this case, the, revolt, the result is 1,078 plus or minus 5 joules per meter square. I'd like to point out that every measurement might not result in a nice flat plateau load during debond propagation, and that's fine. It will just add to the uncertainty in the measurement, such as in this example. Here I would still consider all values following the load spike associated with the debond initiation for the adhesion calculation. This brings us to the final part of the presentation talking about uncertainty analysis. We recommend performing three repeat measurements for every system you'd like to evaluate. That will result in three measures of adhesion denoted here by G sub C and their associated standard deviations, denoted by sigma. To combine these three measurements into a single value, we use a weighted mean and its uncertainty given by these two expressions. I've gone ahead and evaluated each one of these expressions. It's most convenient to first consider the uncertainty which is this square root of the reciprocal of these inverse squares of each individual standard deviation. 
Once you have that value, you can use it in the evaluation of the weighted mean, which is this uncertainty squared times the sum of each individual adhesion divided by its associated standard deviation squared.